By now, you've probably heard a lot about the transition to ICD-10, but how hard is that really going to be? Let's try to put the transition into some perspective. First, think about the codes themselves. Right now, ICD-9 has about 17,000 codes. Let's try to visualize that. 17,000 feet is about halfway up Mount Everest. 17,000 miles is about three quarters of the way around the Earth. On the other hand, ICD-10 has 140,000 codes. 140,000 feet is nearly five times the height of Mount Everest. That's almost six times around the Earth. But the real problem isn't the volume of codes, it's the format. ICD-9 codes are three to five digits. The first digit can be a number or one of two letters. The rest of the digits are all numbers. ICD-10, however, has three to seven digits, and they can be a big mix of numbers and letters. So, why is this a problem? Well, can your computer system input seven digits? And what about the systems that your computers interface with? So, how will you upgrade? Which software will you use? How will you choose a vendor? How are you going to get trained on the new systems? Speaking of training, just learning the codes themselves will probably take 70 to 80 hours of training. Then you have to train your staff and everyone else in the office, the doctors, nurses, everyone, on the new changes to day-to-day -day operations. Will you need to develop new policies, new forms, new positions, reporting procedures, books, reimbursement policies, super bills, budget planning? How will you even know where to start? Welcome to the Financial Impact for ICD-10 webinar trailer. Today, we will cover many of the unrealized financial implications of ICD-10 coming in October 2014 for physician offices. In June of 2013, this article appeared in Forbes magazine. The article is quoting a survey that was done by the Medical Group Management Association, MGMA. Of 1,200 different medical practices across the United States, which represented approximately 55,000 providers, a response to the survey question of whether significant progress had been made in their ICD-10 planning and readiness, the response showed that only 4.8% of the practices and providers who responded indicated that significant progress had been made. Do you realize that means 95% of the practices and providers out there are not even close in their planning and readiness? There are several myths about ICD-10. Myth number one, CMS will postpone the move to ICD-10. Myth two, my software vendor will take care of the needed changes. Myth three, this only affects the coder. Myth four, providers, physicians, don't have to be involved with ICD-10 implementation. Myth five, there is no need to budget for the ICD-10 implementation. And finally, myth six, we have plenty of time to prepare for the ICD-10 implementation. Let's review the truths about ICD-10. Myth 1. Industry experts see no sign that CMS will delay ICD-10 any further than the October 1, 2014 date. The ICD-9 code freeze will go into effect in that same year, meaning there will be no ICD-9 updates after 2014. Myth 2. Some practices and providers are under the assumptions this is only a software change. They believe that once their medical record and practice management systems are updated, then they will have nothing more to worry about. This is a change unlike ANSI 5010 that goes way beyond any functionality of a record or a billing system. Myth 3. It is true that the coder is going to be one of the most highly effective persons in the medical office when it comes to ICD-10. However, diagnosis codes are used in practically every area of the medical practice, from the front desk to the nurse desk to the provider desk everyone is going to be affected some way or another, some more than others. Next to the coder, the provider is probably going to be the most affected person in the office. A coding system that the provider has been used to probably his or her entire career is getting ready to change. The way that he or she completes the progress note will be changing, requiring more specific information. He or she will have to become more familiar with the new coding structure that uses more specific codes, more combination codes for illnesses, 
and more codes identifying sides of the body. Myth 5. We know that practices are going to incur costs when they upgrade their systems to be ICD-10 ready, but it's hard to think of other costs that may be associated. Things like training classes for the coders or other staff in the office, covering the time in the office when these staff members are away for training, revising any paperwork that is used in the office that has diagnosis information on it. The dollars will add up quick. This is definitely not a free change. Myth 6. October 1, 2014 may seem a long way off from today. However, each day that an office puts off starting to work on a plan for ICD-10 is one they cannot get back. The office may not need to be actively doing something on ICD-10 every day, but they need to have started planning and looking at the way their office will be affected, so that as the October 1 date gets closer, they are ready to put their plan in place and be ready for the implementation of this new coding structure. In fact, ICD-10 will change everything. All areas of the office will experience some form of change. The clinical workflow processes will require some updating. The daily tools and use of super bills will require updating. And the yearly agreements with payers and most frequently paid or unpaid claims will all need evaluation. The industry is often focused on the coders and the billers, but we want to highlight the increase in documentation for physicians to align with the new code formats, specificity in documentation, and changes in many more code choices in ICD-10. In another study shared on the CMS website recently, the expected decrease in revenue for a physician's office is specifically linked to incomplete physician documentation based on the new requirements for ICD-10 codes. As we focus in on these concerns for our doctors, clinicians, and providers, it is important that we consider some preparation for the transition from the very familiar code sets in 9 to the new unfamiliar, more detailed code sets of 10. What amount of training will I need and when? Will my schedule need to be revised for training or for the days and months after the implementation date? Is my documentation sufficient or will I need to change? There are specific examples of new ICD-10 features that you may be unfamiliar with. Every single one of these is a new feature that impacts in at least one way every type of code. Therefore, there is no one-to-one -one crosswalk. Laterality, right versus left versus bilateral. Every diagnosis that could potentially occur on a body part that has a right and a left side now has a laterality specific code. Combination codes. Codes have been expanded to include additional symptoms or manifestations of a disease. Obstetric codes. With ICD-10, coding now will need to be done to identify the trimester that the patient is in. So, just like with laterality, we will see an increase in codes because these new diagnosis codes will now contain first, second, or third trimester. These are just some of the examples of the new features that are part of ICD-10. Let's take a look at some specific comparisons between ICD-9 and ICD-10 clinical modification codes. Note the differences in the number of codes from 9 to 10. 14,025 codes in ICD-9, up to 68,069 codes in ICD-10. There are several other examples on this page, noting specifically the last two. Code extensions for specificity and laterality and dummy placeholders for development of the new codes in the future didn't even exist in the old ICD-9 code set. Let's look at how big it could be for certain specialties. This chart shows us that cardiology is going to be a little bit more than doubled in the number of codes they are using. So it is true that overall we will be going from 14,000 codes to over 68,000 codes. But as we look at this slide, we can see more specifically how certain types of providers will be affected. As a cardiologist, my main focus will be on the 430 cardiology-related codes in the new ICD-10 code structure, not the entire 68,000 code set. Now let's take a look at the bottom of the chart, orthopedics. Their number of codes are going to increase, going from 543 codes to over 5,800. Now that's a change. Some more data to consider. A consortium of professional medical societies and organizations, including the Medical Group Management Association, in 2008 retained a consulting firm to assess the cost impact of the ICD-10 mandate on three different size practices. The assessment defined a small practice as comprising of three physicians and two administrative staff, a medium practice as consisting of 10 physicians, one full-time coder, and six administrative staff and a large provider is consisting of 100 physicians, 64 coding staff, and 54 medical records staff. 
Based on the study, let's break those costs out in detail. Here are the five concerning expense areas. Increased documentation costs, staff education and training, the business process analysis of a health plan contract, coverages and determination and documentation, changes to super bills, information technology system changes, and cash flow disruption. Now you're beginning to see how ICD-10 will actually change everything, including all roles in an office. Now let's shift our focus to managers. Consider the policies and procedures that will need updating, the updated vendor and payer contracts, and the budget that needs to be considered for the software upgrades to upgrade to ICD-10 ready versions of software. And last, the budget for needed software upgrades for ICD-10 ready versions of software. And for our office managers, who is going to update this form? Whether it's a paper charge ticket, a super bill, or an electronic encounter form used in a PM or EMR system, ICD-10 will affect this process. And this only begins the list of the areas that offices will have to look at during their planning. Remember one of our myths from earlier about not needing a budget? Here's an example of something that could cost money. When this form needs to be revised and reprinted with all of the new ICD-10 code information. There are a few more areas in the medical office that we will need to address for the ICD-10 transition. The main concern of the office manager is going to be getting the right codes on the charges and those charges sent out to the insurance carriers so that they can get paid. The office manager will have to work with many different people inside and outside the office to make sure this is done correctly. Additionally, the manager will need to make sure the office is staffed and ready for the time immediately after the transition when it could take longer for everything in the office. So, do you consider limiting the provider's schedules? Do you allow overtime for billers and coders? How will you cover for the staff when they are out for training and or the time immediately after the implementation date? In review, we've shown just a few examples of how roles, workflows, processes, and documentation will all undergo changes for the transition to ICD-10. We've considered super bill revisions, physician documentation, projected increase in time per patient, and the time for all in the office to adapt to the new code sets. Thank you for your interest in the ICD-10 webinar trailer hosted by McKesson Business Performance Services. As an added bonus, you will receive the ICD-10 Pathway for Getting Started Transition Timeline as a free download from McKesson Business Performance Services. To view the full two-hour ICD-10 webinar, upgrade your practice management system today to Metasoft version 19 or LiTech 2014. Please contact your value-added reseller to obtain the upgrade.